And so when I submitted a proposal for this talk, I knew what I wanted to share and what I wanted to talk. And it was about creating a tiny system for a big screen. So instead of coming up cool names, I just gave a talk title, this is tiny system for big screen. Soon realized that the speaker was announced and on the website, you'll have no idea what I'm about to speak about. Um, I was at the Brooklyn JS a week ago, two weeks ago, and the organizer of the Brooklyn JS, Jed, uh, gave me this title, Desktopify Your Web Chops with Not WebKit. So I am going to talk about creating a desktop application using your Node.js skills, or um, you don't really need a Node.js skill. You just need your web skills like HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. So hi, I'm Mariko. This is my Twitter handle. I'm a developer at Live Intent, and I like to make tools for people. And there's a reason behind why I have emphasis on people. So I only started coding full time this year. And before that, for five years, I was still in web development, but I was a project manager. So I wasn't contributing to the code base. I was managing schedules, the messaging in between people, and I was basically serving a communications between people. So like many other project managers, I started coding in spreadsheet. Spreadsheet is a great application and programming language that, um, that all of the code is modularized, that each cell gets all of the functions, and you need to combine it together. There's a great UI library called a conditional formatting that dynamically changes depending on what your uh, value is. If you wanted to have an automated build system, there's such a thing called Excel macro that automates all of your tasks and you don't need to repeat yourself again. So I was really into it, and this is really bad. Excel has a margin for error, so I, have, I needed to write down all of the guidelines in order for this schedule spreadsheet to work. Because if somebody leaves out one field, then the conditional formatting won't work. So there, for the five years, I developed this fascination for creating a tools, tools to learn your web application development. And I call it tiny system. And through doing that, I learned that the tool should not be in between, uh, should not interpret that, uh, in, interrupt that you do your good job. The tool should be portable, tool should be reusable, <coughs> and tool should be maintainable. So you should not need somebody full time to managing the system that you want to use. Then, the tool should look like a thousand of fire when you're making a web application. So then, the big screen part of the tool title comes with this picture. So I work for the company that's growing. We double the size from last year, moved into the new office, and did the old working thing. And one day, we installed big screen hanging out on the city. At the same time, I was actually working on an internal reporting dashboard and searching a lot of uh, resources online. And I came across, <laughs> but, uh, came across the YouTube video from this conference this year, where uh, Jason from Facebook is talking about how Facebook does visualization for their giant screen. And I was like, okay, I'm making a reporting dashboard. We just got the screen. I want to make that application for our screen in the office, and I volunteered to do that project. And I asked, but how? And the first three years of me project being a project manager was spent at a web application startup. So we actually did develop a content distribution system for digital signage. So immediately, I thought, oh, I need to use Air. My first three years was from 08, 09, and 10. That was the time that all of the video applications were still running Flash. When Air came out, it was amazing that we could package a Flash application into desktop and distribute it for platform. This project was, you know, only me. Uh, it did not have any .NET or Flash programmer. Um, I basically put in like web technology and I studied no, but that's it. And 
develop your application. And when I, was, when I first was doing this, right now it seems like so obvious that, oh yeah, you just create an object and then add up to your window. I was not doing that last line, and I was like, why is my application doesn't have um, many were coming up, but that was, that was the only line that I was using. So, um, I quoted this presentation into the application. Now I run. It's an application with, without the plane and all of the side uh, menu that I created. It shows you the version. It shows you the debug window. So you can debug it as if you were debugging your web application. You can go into full screen mode. And from now on, my presentation is happening inside of my desktop application I can see here. So again, you can execute any Node.js script. So you are in the desktop application right now. So let's find out a child process to execute this application again. Um, Another application that starts. If you do that again, the first thing starts one more application. So you can see that if you, especially this is a child process, that if you have any bash script or any other script that you want to do, anything you can do from Node, you can execute it from your desktop application. Packaging the application is very, very easy. You basically need to zip all of your project files and then combine it with a one thing that comes in when you install Node Hook Kit. And this part is a uh, platform specific, and there's a good documentation on the project. So, to recap, you really need HTML, CSS, JavaScript to start making desktop applications. And it's very, very easy to start, as easy as installing the Node Hook Kit and finding a package JSON. If you already have a single page application or something, it's perfect. And in Node.js plus UI, like I did uh, span out the child process, is really powerful. So going back to big screen project that I originally discovered Notebook Kit, my plan was that the big screen itself will have some kind of data visualization. Then the user will have some kind of admin page that controls what to be uh, displayed on the big screen. So if you are in web development, you think, okay, so you are going to write some kind of server-side code, and both of these applications are connecting through the server. But I was making a desktop application, and I discovered that basically no web kit application can any node code, meaning that you can start your local server at the time you start your local application. So I moved all of my server-side application code down to the desktop app and then let it connect with something that I want. So oh, the, my application itself, the what gets to be displayed on the big screen, I was like, okay, so maybe some kind of chart, some kind of message that you can enter from your admin panel and send it to the screen. And maybe, you know, there's a toggle button that like if there was some kind of presentation or guest speaker coming in with a video screen from the admin panel. So application JS is entry point, application HTML is entry point to your desktop application. Inside of that HTML, it starts the server JS, which starts a Express server and the socket IO connection, and other um, interactions and everything are handled by app JS. So so the if, again, HTML search server, so get IO, do the receiving of the message, and then also use for the web galaxy handshake for that. The server JS is very, very simple express server. I needed to export it, the, the express application part, so that it takes callback and more. Uh, I'll talk about it more later. Why? But itself is very simple. It starts express up. When, you, uh, when users access the root directory, it serves admin HTML with the uh, IP address of the internal server and the port number for the socket IO. And the socket IO part is, again, very simple. Creating the connection, 
depending on what type of the question comes in, um, use it for the level of country or use it to manipulate the long and notifications. And again, after all of that app is set up, you send a callback. So at the HTML, this is the HTML that gets loaded when you start application. So the problem was that if you're developing with a website, then if the website is loading, that means your server is already up. But in this case, your application first needs to start the server, and then that application needs to access to that server that you started to get the socket IO connection working. So I needed to move those interactions into the callback so that it makes sure that those clicks are run after the server is done. So basically, I require server.js and then run the server. Once the server is already running, the callback function kicks in. That gets a script for the socket IO accessing the local server. And then um, starting the socket connections and including all of the web OPC JavaScript that needs a socket IO. Admin gate itself is very simple. This is going to be accessed from you know, your laptop or something. So if this page is loading, then your server is already running. Um, again, it uses the local network to access to the local server that's running local application. And use the socket IO to send message and connect like, webcam so that you can start the video. So this HTML is very simple, regular um, website um, includes the socket IO JavaScript and creating a socket connection. All of the buttons that send the message is disabled by default. And once the socket IO connection is on, it gets enabled. And if you lose the connection to the socket IO, then it gets disabled so that you cannot interact with the control application. So so this is the my version of the application I tried to create. Um, this application is running, that means the local server is running. So if you go to thousand, um, there is an admin panel there, and if I tilt this application, means that the server is disabled, there are disabled star socket eye connections, so the button is not clickable, if I put it again, the server does not exist. <laughs> so my original thought was that you can uh, control the UI from using socket IO from the admin panel. So let's say I send a message. <coughs> it updates the message field in the application. And let's start a video stream. Once I start the broadcasting, it switches the application itself to the video mode so that now you are streaming the video from your admin panel to your desktop application. Once you stop, it goes back to it goes back to the visualization. So at this point you might be asking like, why do you develop a desktop application? This can be achieved by a web app. And there's another couple of cases that came across that actually making desktop application that is your job done faster. At one point, I was making some application. I showed it to my colleagues saying, hey, I made this up. It was running on my local server. I was ready to deploy it. And they're like, oh, cool. And I said, like, yeah, I'm going to put it on the server. And then the conversation starts with, we just like a security check. Like, there is IP restriction. Like, what about VPN? And like, who's going to be the sysadmin? And what about continuous integration? I cannot ship my application. But now, if you create a HTTP server inside of your application, it is like a one-time server that you can double-click, start, and then once the job gets done, you can close, and the server disappears. And I found it really powerful, especially the case when you're making tools that um, you, the, the users that does not know how to start, like, typing simple 
server to let them use a use a server to do uh, the point to get in that they do a browser when they can do. The other example is that when you're dealing with a gigabyte to gigabyte of data, for example, you might have a batch like that process like two gig of CSV file that your link to itself cannot process. And you know, you might have no problem going into the plant mine and doing my collection and chat and go um, set and all of that. But maybe the business side of people are a little hesitant to go and dive in to learn about batch split or uh, any kind of plant mine tool to start doing it. And you, they might be coming to you every time they have a single task. And now you can create a simple first application with the beautiful UI that you can just use it. Notebook Kit is certainly not the only um, application that you can use when you're trying to make a desktop app. There is a one called the App Shop by GitHub, and they have a good write about write up about what's the difference between App Shell and the Notebook Kit. The biggest difference is that the Notebook Kit uses HTML as an entry point to the application. The App Shell uses a JavaScript file as an entry point. So much like if you played around with Phantom JS, it's much like that that your JavaScript starts the window and then starts. Um, I found it, it's a little easier for the notebook kit coming from web development platform. Adobe also thing called the Packet Shell. And if you're not restricted to just know the JS, so like a client side um, things, you can always like see your Java or something, you can always use Chromium and data. So the summary again, package your front end application process, easy, be easy. And server-side applications, no problem. You can learn any Node.js free. And again, Node.js, especially spinning out the child process for running any kind of command and having valid UI is very, very awesome when you're making tools for people. So the slides and the demo app that I just showed that I'm about to see are on my GitHub. That's my Twitter handle again. I'd love to connect with you all. Thank you.